Hello, this is Miss Augustine, and we have been talking about Chapter 6, Bonding. And so we're up to the last section of the chapter, which talks about molecular compounds. So we're going to talk about some of the properties of molecular compounds or molecular substances. And it's good to know that they exist in all states of matter, so you can find them as solids, liquids, and gases. <clears throat> Their melting points and boiling points in general are low compared to ionic compounds. And there are some exceptions, however, and those are something called network solids. And these are stable substances where all of the atoms are covalently bonded to each other, but because of intermolecular forces of attraction, like we talked about in the previous section, they have high boiling and melting points. And in these network solids, there's um, a situation where all the atoms are interconnected, whether through bonds or through strong intermolecular forces. And an example would be diamond, and another example would be silicon carbide. So that leads us to a discussion of allotropes. And the definition of allotropes are different forms of an element that have different patterns of their bonding. And there are several elements that have allotropes, but we only talk about carbon. And carbon has three known allotropes. The first of which that we'll talk about is graphite, such as you would have in your mechanical pencil. So graphite consists of these six-membered rings that are arranged in sheets. And there are strong forces of attraction between them, but because they're arranged as sheets, they can slide over one another, and that's why graphite is an excellent lubricant. The second allotrope of carbon that we talk about is my personal favorite, and that is the diamond. And so the diamond is also made up of six-membered rings, all containing carbon, but they are arranged differently, and they are interconnected in this way. And that is why diamond is a very, very hard compound, very hard substance, because of these forces of attraction and these interconnected bonds. And then the third type of allotrope for carbon that we talk about is Buckminster fullerene. And I'm going to show you a uh, 60 carbon version of it. And they're sometimes called buckyballs because they're arrangements of five and six membered rings and their shape resembles a ball, a soccer ball. So again, they are compounds that contain only carbon, but because they are arranged differently, whether we're talking about graphite or a diamond or a buckyball, they are still only made up of carbon. And so that is the last part of the chapter that I wanted to talk about. This is Miss Augustine, and I'm going to sign off.